Man, this is a beautiful area. It's just gorgeous up here. The colors are popping. We're at peak. We can see rain coming over here. And... So we got to get to camp right away before we get wet. But man, I just don't want to leave this area. Everybody, this is the Marine and this is Runner. We're back up in the Boundary Waters at BWCA Boundary Waters Canoe Area and we're on the Snowbank Loop, the Snowbank Trail. We're going to be hiking up here for four days, three nights. Kind of got to cut short because I had to go to a funeral. We were supposed to come out yesterday, but uh, things like that happen. So. But we're so happy to be back on the trail. What do you think, Runner? Yeah, I agree with uh, the Marine. It's, uh, it's nice to be back up here for, uh, by our standards, a short trip. But uh, we're looking forward to a great time in the wilderness here. So we will see you on the trail. And so far the trail's been pretty nice, but you know, this is the beginning. But we'll see how it goes. It's a little rocky, of course. It's always rocky up here in the Boundary Waters. But we're at peak. Close to peak colors here in the Boundary Waters. And that's why we're up here. And we noticed there was uh, probably about five or six cars in the parking lot. So there's a lot of people up here and everyone wants to try to hit the colors, but it's supposed to be raining all week. So we'll see how that goes. Kind of excited to get to camp to sit up, get in that hammock. Looking forward to getting some good night sleep and being back on the lake again. Oh, well, we got up about a couple miles on you guys and we came to this portage. We stopped to take some of our clothes off. It was getting too hot. Right now it's 59 degrees. That'd be about 15 Celsius. Runner says he's been working out. Let's what see those what pipes. What Marine, huh? Been uh, doing the curls and stuff? Look at those pipes. Hey. I don't want to insult him or offend him because with those pipes, I'm a little worried. You may come up here and be afraid of bears, but with those pipes on him, yeah. I'm thinking I'm more afraid of them than a bear. Then when you get up on the hill here, you'll see those cairns. Cairns are just a pile of rocks that they'll stack up, so it marks a trail. So when there's no trail and you're on rocks, they'll put these cairns up. You can see the trail goes down there. Don't forget to mention the lack of bugs, flies, and mosquitoes. Oh, we're not used to that up here. Man, we've been Where getting killed. But yeah, this is nice. There's no bugs. And that's why I brought my hammock with no mosquito netting because I was planning on no bugs being up here. But you can see the colors starting to come up here. This is my favorite time of the year.
we're in an area where there was a huge blowdown. Must have been a storm and knocked all these pine trees down. We were going to come up here last year, but they said the trail was closed. And man, this is what we would have had to swim through or go over and try to find a way through here. But what a tangled mess, and I'm grateful for all the guys that volunteer to come up here and cut these trails for us. Really appreciate it. Coming up here since I was 17 years old. So that's 65 years? <laughs> no, I'm only 61. I often oh. wondered if you were very good at the I math. Thought, uh, I thought he was older than that. Yeah, I know it. I looked at the... <laughs> You're an animal. Hey. Runners up there are yelling, you can hear the echo down here coming back at them. Our camp is right down here in Newfound Bay, but we have to go to our left a little bit and then double back to get down this hill. Boy, that's rare to see up here, a marker to mark the campsite. Campsite's down there by Newfound Bay. When we get down there, we're going to set up our camp right away. we got to get firewood, get water. we got about two hours of light, so we got to do the hustle. We just got our camp set up. we got an hour of light. This is Newfound Bay. There's my set up there. Runners tucked in the woods there. Snug as a bug. There's runners studying the map. We're eating our breakfast right now. It rained last night, probably started about three in the morning. Windy. I had my flap, you can see, to block the wind, to get the rain from coming in here, from blowing in here. So I stayed dried. Runner, how'd you do last night? Oh, I slept great. I had a wonderful hang down there, kind of protected a little bit more than this one, but uh, I had arm wrestle for it, so it, uh, it worked out good. One thing I'd like to tell you guys, this tarp from Hammock here, it's the Winter Palace, is a big tarp, so if it rains, we can come in here and we can get, you know, stay dry and, and I can put the doors down. I have doors on here to block the wind. Now, Cuban fiber can come in translucent, and this is called olive green. And you can get camouflage, but it makes it darker. But one thing with this translucent, it really lights it up in here. So if you're in the day and it's raining, you can get underneath here, it still lights it up in here, and it's nice to be underneath here. So this is really a great little tarp. If you're debating whether to get a translucent olive green or the camouflage pattern. So if you're a light sleeper, I probably would suggest get the camouflage pattern so it makes it a little darker in here. But it is nice to have this translucent light coming in here. It lights it up in here so we can eat, drink, 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 drink wow, oh, drink. Drink. <laughs> drink and be merry. Well, we're done with breakfast, we're packing up, we're getting ready to go. It isn't raining out, I'm hoping it's gonna clear up a little bit. It's supposed to rain all day today, but the clouds look pretty thin, and the wind is blowing and it's moving it out, so hopefully we'll have a clear day and it won't rain. Temperature right now is 50 degrees, that would be 10 Celsius, and you can see getting everything packed up. 
I'd like to show you the view from my tarp, how I had this pitched. So that's what I woke up to. And like I said earlier, I had my door pitched down low to block that wind coming in because the wind was coming off the lake. Well, we're going to finish packing up. We're going to head out. So far on this west side of the lake, little hills, not bad, but it's rocky, which is kind of cool. So you have to have cairns. You can see there's one up there to help you find a trail. So it's nice that people put these cairns in. We came to one spot though that the cairn was in the wrong spot and led us to all uh, well off the trail and it was into a marsh that someone probably thought that's the way to go. We're in the marsh a little bit. We had to turn around because it was getting deeper and we knew that wasn't the trail. So we had to double back. Took about 10 minutes off of our time here. That would happen yesterday and luckily runner noticed that. Yeah, it was uh, reminiscent of our, our trip on the Isle Royale where we did the same thing and we didn't uh, turn around quick enough. So this time we realized that we were going the wrong direction. I think we talked about it together and uh, we both agreed this is probably not the way. So this w that would have been bad. We would have been, uh, if we went much further, we would have been hiking in the dark and this is not the kind of trail you want to hike in the dark. Definitely not. Otherwise, it's not marked up here. That campsite was marked, which was kind of cool. But you will see where the Keke Quebec uh, is marked. But other than that, when you, once you get off the Keke Quebec Trail, it's not marked. Sometimes someone will put up a little ribbon. But you have to be careful because there's moose trails up here. And there's a lot of other trails that come in. So you really have to know your map and you really have to look and keep navigating in the right direction. Otherwise, it's not bad if you just keep uh, paying attention to the map. If you come to a fork in the road, one goes left or right, and if you're going counterclockwise, always go right. If you're going clockwise, you want to always go to the one to the left because this trail follows around the lake. But there are trails that go down to the lake, so you have to make sure you identify those. This is Grub Lake and there's a campsite. Huh? <laughs> Real small campsite. I don't know how they're gonna get water because we're up on a hill. There must be a ledge down there to get water. The latrines down there. As you can see, this campsite is really small. So if you're coming up here with a hammock, I recommend not coming to this Grub Lake campsite. And you can see there's a lot of dead trees in here. Even for the tent pad is right behind me with these dead trees here. This is not a very good site. Usually the sites up in the Boundary Waters are beautiful. This is a backpacking site. The canoe sites are a lot better. So when you're up here, look for a canoe site because those are better sites. Well, we decided to stop at Grub Lake and have a snack here. And the snack we're going to have, it's a nut goodie. Now, these nut goodies are made in St. Paul. And my ma used to work there about 50 years ago. When I was in the Marine Corps, she would send these rejects, cases of them, 
over when I was overseas in the jungle, she would send them there. Only thing is when it got there, they were so melted together, it was one big glob. But the guys, uh, we really appreciated it. And what's ironic is my wife's mother worked there probably at the same time. Um, she worked there for many years, so uh, it's just really kind of interesting how our lives have been entwined before we even knew it. So we are meant to be together as buds here, backpacking uh, for such a time as this right now. Sorry about the camera moving, the wind is blowing and starting to pick up. So we're not drunk, it's just the camera moving. <laughs> <laughs> You know, you guys, I forgot to tell you, we started this trip on October 2nd, which was a Tuesday. Today is a Wednesday, October 3rd. And we just had a snack down there. And believe it or not, we got mosquitoes biting us, a few mosquitoes. They're still hanging on, trying to get the uh, last call. We've been seeing a lot of moose droppings around here. So there's a lot of moose. Had that wolf droppings yesterday, wolf scab. We haven't heard any wolves yet. We were hoping to hear them last night because there's a lot of wolves in this area. But we're heading down this way into this lowland, and that's moose country right down there. That's where we're gonna be right now, kind of bedding down. So we're hoping to kick up a moose. Do you see any moose yet, runner? Beaver dam number three. This is another beaver dam we have to cross. It's a little muddy down here, but it doesn't look too bad up here. But then we gotta climb this hill. It's real pretty in here. Beaver dam number four. This is our fourth beaver dam. What a beautiful view up here. Almost a 360. Yeah, if you come up here, try to come during the peak time. The peak will vary every once in a while. It's later this year. Usually it's the end of September, but this year it was beginning of October. Now this is the other side of that little hilltop that's way up here. And this is on the north end of Snowbake Lake. And down there is Boot Lake. We're heading down that way. Somehow we're going to have to go way down and climb up. There's a 
steep cliff there, so we're going to have to climb up that. Our camp is right over in there on that point, if you can see. It's starting to rain. I hope it's not going to rain too hard because it's really slippery on these rocks, and we got a lot of uh, steep downhills here. we got to go way down and go way back up, and these rocks can be slippery when it's wet. But we see the rain coming this way, coming from the south. starting to rain pretty good now. It's nice to have a little bridge across here because we didn't want to wait across here, so it's really nice there's a bridge here. Just about a half hour before we got to this campsite, it started pouring out, put on the rain jacket. So one thing that's great about backpacking with a hammock, and I've said it a million times, I'm going to say it a million times more, is when we got here, we set up this tarp, got everything underneath here, then we went down and got water right away. And then we came back, and then I set up my hammock, Got all that set up, got into some dry clothes, just had some hot chocolate. This is what we do when we come up to the Boundary Waters. Runner gets on his cell phones and plays video games. What game are you playing now, Runner? I'm not playing a game. I'm texting your wife. She likes to know if I'm safe. Are you safe? Are you ever safe with me? No. No, there you're, uh, you're crazy, dude. Over the hill there is the lake. Here, look. Look this way. Runner's taking a picture of us. So we're going to kick back and have dinner in about an hour. We might play a little hand of cribbage. And then I plan on getting to bed early. I'm going to get in that hammock as quick as I can tonight. And hopefully it won't rain, but I think it's going to sprinkle all night. Hopefully tomorrow, tomorrow was supposed to be the best day of the week but we'll see how that goes. Well, we're eating our dinner. Starting to get dark out. The wind just kicked up. It's drizzling a little bit, but with that wind kicking up, I might put my doors down over here to block the wind. Got my shirts hung up, jackets over there, rain jacket. Drying it out and runner, what do you have to eat there? Uh, looks like it's supposed to be lasagna. I don't know if it is, but Yep. Give it a try. And I'm having packet gourmet pasta beef. It's a noodle thing. You're supposed to cook it on the stove. I didn't know that. I let it sit for about 15 minutes, but the noodles are hard, but it still tastes good. A little crunchy. Hopefully we'll wake up tomorrow morning and uh, it won't be raining out. 